Well, good evening, guys. Uh, this is our last day of the of the event, and tonight we'll have Samara here. He, uh, she is a PhD on on forensic soil science. Uh, she spent some time in Scotland with Lorna Dawson, developing her her PhD project, and. She, she worked within several criminal cases here in Brazil. And to, tonight, she will talk a little bit about a case uh, that happened in Curitiba. And she, she worked and helped to, to solve that case. So please welcome, Samara. Hello, Marcelo. Good evening, all. Hello, Lucas. First of all, many thanks for inviting me for this lecture. I am truly grateful. And so today I'd like to talk about this work called Can Analysis of a Small Cloud Have to Solve a Murder Case? So guys, this work was carried out in partner with Federal University of Paraná and the Federal Police and the James Hatton Institute in Scotland as well. And also this work was financed by CAPES. And today uh, I'd like to say many, many thanks to Professor Van der Mello, Professor Lorna Dawson, and uh, Fabio Salvador from the Federal Police for helping me a lot in this work. Thank you very much. So let's go. Here is a crime scene, and uh, what do you see here? Several objects found at a crime scene may have traces of soil adhered to, to their surface due to the high transferability of the soils. This potential of transferability of the soil is directly related to its specific conditions, such as moisture, moisture content, the more humid the soil, the more easily it can adhere to any surface. The content of clay or colloidal particles have uh, a great importance as well. Particularly in adhesion of these particles. So those high, those particles with a uh, reduced uh, size and uh, higher organic matter content may present greater adhesion and great transferability potential. These colloidal particles, such as clay and organic matter, have a large specific surface area due to their extremely small size. These conditions give to clay and organic matter, a high surface reactivity make them impregnated clothes, shoes, and objects more easily, as you can see in this image. When I talk here, guys, about transferability, I'd like to talk about uh, a clump of soil. And please, I need that you imagine this small cloud of soil being transferred to several places, like to a crime scene. See the importance of this transferability of the soil and of the, their particles. It gives us conditions to establish a special and chronological sequence of events linked to a criminal scene. These objects linked to the crime scene can be fabrics, can be uh, muddy tires, can be uh, muddy from the sole of the boot, uh, other tools like spade or other tools used in a crime scene. Also, a person may have traces of uh, adherent on their body, like here in this image where these soil particles can be adhered in a surface of uh, a, a human body, such as hair, 
under the fingernails and the eyes and others. The fact is, soil can be found in a variety of ways at a crime scene, as you can see here. And these soil trays contains precious, very precious, actually, very precious information, which are related to its origin. And this information can point out the origin of the soil. Thus, we can track the places, people, and objects related to this crime scene. A question that would be answered now is, why soil is so important at a crime scene? It's just because we can track the soil trace. And then, what kind of information could the soil provide to elucidate a criminal investigation? So, this question can be answered or partially answered based on soil variability. And here, we have another important question, which is how to discriminate the soils? Soils have a set of chemical, physical, and uh, mineralogical and biological characteristics. So, all of these characteristics make the soils high, highly variable and uh, unique as well between any one place and, and another. In this, uh, in this way, the singular nature of the soil can be responsible for this image. Here, we can see soils with different colors. So, a simple soil sample found here, where I am might be very different from the soil found right where you are right now. So this great variability of the soil in its characteristics is due to the factors and the processes of soil formation. Also, calent soilgenesis or pedogenesis. What would these factors and the processes, processes be? So let's see. Here we have the factors uh, linked to the soilgenesis. About the genesis of the soils, here we can see the factors responsible for the formation of a soil profile as a result of the physical, chemical, and the biological weathering process, which are responsible for its great variability and consequently for differentiating potential of the soils. The first and one of the most important factors, which refers to the climate or weather conditions. So with the most relevant climate conditions being precipitation and temperature. The source, the parent material are, however, is nothing less than the rocks, where they are sedimentary, magmatic, and metamorphic rocks. Next, we have the relief here. And the, the relief is responsible by the relationship of the soil in a landscape. Also, we have the organisms factor, which includes all fungi, bacteria, earthworms, and others. And uh, as a passive factor, we have the time in which we can infer that the more time passes, the more the soil will be subject to the transformations in its physical, chemical, and mineralogical properties. Now that we know the factors, let's go to the processes. Here we have the four main processes uh, responsible to the soil genesis. Um, here you can check all these processes and that act in the soil continuously and simultaneously with the soil formation factors. The four general processes are additions, losses, transformations, and translocations. These factors and these processes can give rise to different types of soil, and each one with its particular characteristics. 
this wide variability can have distinguished soils from all locations and once distinguished can be linked to a crime scene. Here I'd like to talk about how we can handle forensic soils. First, we need to find the potential for discrimination. This discrimination potential is directly dependent on the amount of sample, grams, milligrams, sample conditions, moisture, individual soil particles, or aggregated units, its arrangement on the object, such as shoes. Is there any layer of deposition in a sole of the boot, like here in this image? Or can we see some color different in the same soil aggregate? Possibly this aggregate contains soil particles from different places and a temporal and special certification or deposition would be revealed. In which soils adhere to different surfaces may reveal adhesions occurring at different times and places. For data obtaining in a soil analysis laboratory, we generally apply multivariate statistics, such as principal component analysis, PCA, 2D and 3D, which is widely used to identify samples belonging to the same group and uh, different groups according uh, to the analysis results, uh, according to the data obtained at the laboratory. In addition, we also use factor or factorial analysis, multidimensional scaling, MDS, grouping or similarity index by breakers. And also we use uh, the softwares, high score plus and new mod and the correlation matrices. In addition, it would be possible to analyze some mineralogical characteristics of, uh, with specific softwares like NewMod. This software provides us details, as example, about interstratified minerals such as smectite and vermiculite. Okay, after this brief introduction to you guys, I would like to talk a little, a little bit uh, about a real criminal case in which we had the opportunity to work in partnership with the scientific police of Paraná. This case involved the murder, a murder of a young woman. Uh, as you can see here in this picture, this murder occurred in 2018 and had great repercussions. Why? Uh, as her former partner was a military police or police office, became the, being, the main suspect in the crime. In the early morning hours of uh, May 9, 2018, the girl, this girl, Andriele, was reported missing. The last person who was with her in this day, according to the cameras in front of the building where she lived, was Diogo, as can you see here in this image, the main suspect. At the time, we were conducting field studies on crime scene simulations, and when the police came to us to report to help in this case, we thought we needed and we also put into into practice everything we had tested and in a field, in a laboratory, so far in simulated crime scenes. Andriele's body had not yet been found at this day, uh, 9 May. After three weeks of the girl's disappearance, a motorcyclist traveling along the Graciosa Road near the municipality of Mohetes in Paraná, state of Paraná, uh, South Brazil, managed to find the girl's body in a food plain area in a 
vegetation uh, area. Something worth mentioning here is that the other trees, the other traces, uh, kind of traces normally found at the crime scene have lost focus and why? Uh, as far as we know, have been tempered with. In this way, just to tell you, the trace of soil um, gaining a lot of prominence in this case. Both of those found in the suspect shoes, shoes and in the suspect's vehicle, apprehended by the Federal Police of Paraná. This case was very important for our studies, uh, for my career as well, and uh, it really brought us a lot of learning. I will try to report as much detail as I can to you here. Before continuing, I want to say many thanks to Professor Van der Mello for his extremely dedication, extreme dedication in this case, and uh, Alexandre de Lara and Dr. Lorna Dawson for, for helping me a lot in this case. Thank you very much. As you can see here on this map, this case took place in the state of Paraná, in south, southern Brazil, more precisely in the metropolitan region of Curitiba, where it was at the center of the events. Andriele lived in Colombo, in the metropolitan region, a few kilometers from, from Curitiba. So we collected soil samples in this municipality of Colombo, as well as in Curitiba. On Graciosa Road, where her body was found, and also in the suspect's vehicle. We are unable to leave any traces of dirt, of soil, on the suspect boots, as the shoe is incredibly clean. Luckily, we still had the car. Once this background is done, let's go to the procedures uh, development. I hope all of you are understanding me and uh, my Brazilian English as well. So uh, let's go. Here we have uh, the suspect's vehicle that we sampled the soil traces from. I made a point of highlighting these two images then that you can see outlining in blue, as these are photos of the only places where we found ground in the vehicle. Inside, on the carpet, on the pedals, it was really, really clean. And that is very curious. Now, when we came across the inside of the vehicles, right fender, we found what in the photo, photo looks like a lot here. But believe me, it was just a few particles. I did it to the fenders. We also found these splashes of soil in the vehicle's direct uh, vehicle right rear view mirror. Can you see here in this photo? Uh, it sounds like a lot of soil, right? But because, because it's so little, but uh, we need to combine the two samples of the fender and the rear view, rear view mirror to get a reasonable amount of sample. And it um, and was just uh, 500 milligrams. And this small amount uh, of soils on your hands, we try to, to study, to analyze the origin of the soil inserting or discarding these traces from the crime scene where Andriele's body was found. So here we have the soil sampling map along the Graciosa Road where we collected soils according to a standard operating procedure for soils which we developed in partnership with the Federal Police. In this procedure of soil sampling, we recommended sampling in the form of quadrants, like here in this image. Uh, this quadrant was designed uh, with five points. We have uh, a point in each corner and a central point in this quadrant. Okay. And also, we collected 
in 55 sites along the Graciosa Road from its lower level near to the municipality of Mohitz here, through the place where the victim's body was found here, in about a few meters, and uh, which we check tire slip marks and associate it to the context of this crime. And we are collecting up to the upper level of the federal road here at this point. One thing you might be wondering is why do we collect samples in so many different places, Curitiba, Colombo, at various points in Graciosa and not just where her body was found here. We proceeded in this way because we need to, con to confront the suspect's defense in the future, who, who may claim that the suspect was in other places of Graciosa on tour. And uh, it is a tourist region, Graciosa Road, but was not in the place where her body was found. So we collected in all of these places. Climatic conditions. Here I bring this graph to you to show you just uh, the rainfall distribution in the period that coincided with the occurrence of this crime. Before I comment a little bit on it, do you remember when I said what uh, about the moisture contributes, uh, how much the moisture is contributes to the transferability potential? So now it will be easier for us to understand the practical importance of this. On the vertical axis, we have the precipitation total in millimeters here. And uh, on the horizontal axis, we have the distribution and the, the time, the time of the rainfall. Okay, the lines uh, refer to the different days of the occurrence of this rainfall. The blue line refers to 7 May. The red line refers to 8 May. And the uh, the green line refers to the 9 May. Okay, what we can observe here. So mm, note that the day before the crime, the distribution of rain was considerably higher and this make us make some inferences, such as if the ground of the Graciosa road was wet, then it is possible that it could adhere much more easily to the well set of the vehicle, particles of soil on the vehicle. Okay, the fenders and the rear view mirror and even any other object in this case, because this condition helped to the adhesion and to the potential of transferability. The area where Andrea's body was found as an area with vegetation and a lot of moisture or humidity. And these are all things we should consider here. About the soil sample analysis, here I present to you our sequential analytical protocol. First, we have the soil samples containing all primary particles, which are sand, silt, and clay as well as organic matter. Initially, we separate these fractions by physical fractionation. This separation of fraction is very, very important as it allows us to study these samples more safely. So we separated the sand fraction here uh, by fractionation from the silt plus clay plus organic matter fraction here. Why did, did we leave the silt plus clay plus organic matter fractions together? Then we remove the organic fraction, but the silt plus clay fraction we left together due to the reduced amount of sample we had. In the same fraction, we performed that the first technique, which is X-ray powder fraction, and so that we could observe the mineralogical profile of these samples. Next, we performed 
the method uh, 3052, which is the extraction of hydrofluoric acid and uh, nitric acid. Below, we, you will see the analytical techniques that we did in the smallest size fraction, silt plus clay plus organic matter. First, we proceeded to a visual evaluation that I will comment with you on the next slide. Uh, the visual evaluation is strictly generic. That is, it's only for a preliminary screening. We cannot uh, say uh, some conclusions only by analyzing the soil color. Therefore, we also did what we call sequential chemical extractions. First, we did the extraction with sodium hypochlorite to extract the organic matter fraction from the samples. And then we removed, we removed this fraction to reduce the interference uh, in other analysis, such as X-ray diffraction, uh, as example. Subsequently, only in the silt plus gray fraction here, we go on in the sequential extraction and perform the extraction with ammonia oxalate to remove the iron and aluminum mineral phases of low crystallinity and the commonly called amorphous phases. Then we did the extraction with sodium bicarbonate, uh, the thionite citrate to remove high crystallinity iron and aluminum mineral phase, such as hematite and goethite minerals. And finally, we did the extraction with sodium hydroxide to extract the aluminum silicates. So this is our protocol of analysis, commonly used in all crime scenes. Here, guys, I brought this photo for you just to demonstrate uh, the color difference that there was between the various groups of samples that we collected. Guys, I know that for those who do not work directly with soils, it's sometimes difficult to see any difference in color here in this picture. But I'm going to ask you to make a little effort to look at this picture, um, uh, which talks about group one, for example. Uh, this sample here is, uh, has uh, have a different color from this sample here. So these two samples, analyzing just the color, are different from each other, okay? Uh, the samples, as example, in this group four, are very similar, similarly in this in the color. So what does it mean? The central sample of this picture here belongs to the suspect's vehicle, and the samples around represent those we collected at the location near to the bodies discarding, okay, or bodies disposal. Okay, here we have the first light, the first evidence that show us the similarity of the soil of the suspect's vehicle. The main suspect, uh, called Diogo, with the soil close to where Andrea's body was found. Okay. In this uh, picture, we have the result of the X-ray diffraction on the sand diffraction. Here we have several samples from the crime scene Please note that the red and the blue line belong to the nearby suspect's body and the vehicle disposal re respectively, okay? Here at this point, uh, highlighted by blue, okay? Um, we can see a peak or reflection which refers to a potassic feldspar. It's a mineral very common in granite um, uh, a rock present on Graciosa Road. Okay, it's curious because this potassic feldspar uh, here uh, was only found 
in the sample of the suspect's vehicle and uh, as well the nearby disposal site of Andriele's body. Uh, here we have a more concrete uh, indication or more concrete evidence that these samples share uh, between each other a very similar characteristic profile, uh, mineralogical profile, uh, only here, mineralogical profile. And also, uh, so uh, we, can, we can think about uh, the similarity of these uh, samples. Okay, in this table, um, I just would like to present to you the initial amount of soil soil sample that we had to work with uh, is just a half gram, so uh, 500 milligrams. With the application of all sequential analysis in the laboratory, you can notice that the amount of sample was reduced at each step. So it was necessary to be careful with even the smallest, part, the smallest particles. And uh, until the end of the analysis. After all the laboratory analysis, all uh, this protocol of analysis, we start this statistical analysis to interpret, uh, to study and analyze the entire volume of data generated. The first statistical analysis was the Bray-Kurtz similarity index, or uh, similarity index by clustering, okay, suggested by Professor Lorna Dawson, who used this technique in practically all criminal cases involve, involve soil, soils in United Kingdom. Here you can see in the set of samples highlighted in, in red that 97% similarity was achieved between the samples collected near the body discarding sites and the samples collected in the suspect's vehicle. So all other samples that we collected uh, did not reach this great, uh, this high similarity index, which implies that they do not share similar characteristics with each other. Uh, this was the first uh, statistical analysis, and now I'm going to show you to the PCA analysis. Here we have the PCA analysis, principal component analysis. I would like to show you this part, this, these parts highlighted in blue. Here we have the same sample group as the previous statistical analysis. Okay, note that here in this group we have very similar samples, that is, they share similar characteristics between each other, which are the samples from the vehicle and the samples from the locations uh, near, to, uh, the, near to where the Andrelli's body was discarded, okay? So guys, in, with all of these data, uh, from the laboratory and the statistical analysis, we presented to you a succession, a possible succession of the events, such a, a hypothesis. Okay, on the night uh, of the crime scene, Diogo was if Andriele's body in, in the vehicle, traveling along the Graciosa road, looking for an ideal place to discard of the victim's body. He entered this first location here in this photo, this first photo, but this location, as you can see here, was very, very wet and uh, ended up causing the vehicle tires to sleep, okay, in order not to lose uh, in order to, 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 to not lose the traction of the vehicle and uh, get stuck in this location, it accelerated here. And in this accelerated, it left tire marks in the place, as you can see here in the photo, which even 
uh, has the same pattern of at the vehicle's tires marks, the suspect vehicles, actually. In this way, to get out of this wet place, the first place he found at the, ni at the night of the crime scene, uh, what he possibly did uh, here. So, uh, when uh, he tried to get out this place, uh, he's, uh, he's, he, is he accelerated their car and left tire marks in the place. As you can see here, um, in this acceleration, uh, the wet soil can be, uh, could be adhered to the rear view mirror and uh, the fenders during skating. Okay, in the, in the sequence, find a suitable place to dispose of, to discard of the body with a pavement floor. He stopped at this place, discarded the body and left the place. So this is our succession of the events. Uh, it's just in a hypothesis. So guys, um, in this way, I hope you are still here. Listen to me tonight. We have the following conclusions based on of these uh, hypothesis, data, uh, laboratory analysis, statistical analysis. So. Uh, the first final conclusion was analysis on silt plus clay plus organic matter fraction, fractions were able to discriminate groups of soil samples from the same and from different parent materials or rocks and also from, from mirrored sites. Chemical and um, X-ray powder refraction analysis were able to exclude the orange of the trace sample from Curitiba and Colombo municipalities. So in this way, it is extremely strong the evidence that the suspect's vehicle had traveled, had traveled along the edge of the Graciosa Road near to discarding site of the victim's body. Okay, guys, uh, here I just would like to, I, I just would like to recommend to you this paper. If you like this criminal case with soils and if you want to know more details about this case, we have this scientific paper on the Journal of Science and the Justice. Okay, this paper is avail available online. Uh, that's it. I'd like to say thank you again for your attention uh, and you guys, Marcelo, student chapter, to invite me uh, to this lecture. Questions are very, very welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Samara. Uh, I think we don't have questions by now, but uh, I'd like to say that we have an episode on our podcast about this case where we brought Samara and Professor Vander to talk about this case in detail. So if you want to listen uh, about this case uh, in more details, please uh, go to, to our uh, Spotify Vestigio podcast and it's available in there. Uh, there's a question here. What is the minimum amount of soil to carry out all the analysis used? Um, so, when we work with um, soil particles uh, such as clay or silt or sand, uh, we need uh, a higher amount of soil. But when we talk about organic matter, we can work with a few milligrams of soil. Uh, more questions? Uh, the, I don't think so, but, well, you left your, your contact details in here and 
if people have some questions, can write directly for you. Yeah. And I think there's no problem. But it was a perfect, perfect presentation, Samara. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, guys, for think... uh, inviting me. Uh, thank you very much. So now I think that we can call Florencia from Uba and Matias too. Okay. Now, Florencia will introduce prof uh, Professor Matias, and it's up to her now. Hi, good evening. Good How are you? I'm fine, and uh, Fine, thank you. Uh, bueno, buenas tardes. Hoy tengo el agrado de presentarles a nuestro segundo invitado en este ciclo de charlas. Él es Matías Trusi, es geólogo egresado en el año 2016 en la Universidad Nacional de La Plata. Desde el 2018 hasta la actualidad trabaja como perito geoforense en la sección de, de Ciencias Naturales de la División de Química Legal, eh, perteneciente a la Superintendencia de la Policía Científica de la Provincia de, de Buenos Aires. Hoy eh, nos compartirá, en base a su experiencia en investigaciones y actividades eh, periciales, eh, en la resolución de casos policiales dentro de este rubro. Bueno, desde el IFG Student Chapter eh, le agradecemos por brindar la siguiente charla que se titula Geología Forense, Técnicas Complementarias y su aplicación en la resolución de casos eh, judiciales. Ahora le cedo la palabra a Matías para cuando quiera puede empezar con la charla. Esperamos unos minutos que Matías está teniendo unos problemas de conexión. Eh, ahora se va a volver a, a conectar a la plataforma. Aguarden unos minutos. Hola Matías, eh, ¿me escuchas bien? ¿Cómo andas? ¿Todo bien vos? Con algunos problemas de internet, pero está. ¿Escucha medio bien? Eh, Se escucha cortado. cortado. Sí. Se escucha cortado, ¿no? 
Sí, eh, la imagen está colgada, pero yo te puedo escuchar bien. Hola Matías, ¿me puedes escuchar? Ahí se está escuchando el audio. No, ahí, ahí se escucha bien. Puedes probar eh, de compartir sin la cámara para evitar mayor carga de conexión. ¿El audio bien? Sí, 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 se escucha. Fíjate en Share abajo.
Matías está teniendo unos problemas de conexión, así que vamos a intentar compartir el PowerPoint por él. No podemos, vamos a tener que cancelar la charla de él. Así que aguarden unos minutos y vamos a ver si podemos solucionar el problema.